Hi there. Have you ever gone on a trip, a really long trip, where you had to pack your bags and maybe travel for a long time in the car? That is the story that we are going to read about today. My name is Sharla Bansley, and I'm on the Bedford Board of Supervisors. But today I'm reading a story called The Relatives Came. It is a story written by Cynthia Rylett, and it's illustrated by Stephen Gamble. And I think you'll love his pictures. The Relatives Came. Look at those pictures. Look at all those bags. It was in the summer of the year when the relatives came. They came up from Virginia. They left when their grapes were nearly purple enough to pick, but not quite. There, they're starting their trip. They're packing their, their car. Look at all those suitcases. <laughs> they get a lot of stuff on their trip. They had an old station wagon that smelled like a real car. And in it, they put in an ice chest full of soda pop and some boxes of crackers and some bologna sandwiches. And up they came from Virginia. They left at four in the morning when it was still dark before even the birds were awake. Look at that, starting their trip. They drove all day long and into the night. And while they traveled along, they looked at the strange houses and different mountains. And they thought about their almost purple grapes back home. They thought about Virginia. But they thought about us too, waiting for them. There they are on their trip. So they drank up all their soda pop and they ate up all their crackers and they traveled up all those miles until finally they pulled into our yard. Then it was hugging time. Talk about hugging. Those relatives just passed us all around their car, pulling us against their wrinkled Virginia clothes, crying sometimes. They hugged us for hours. I think they were happy to see them. Then it was into the house and so much laughing and shining faces and hugging in the doorways. You'd have to go through at least four different hugs to get from the kitchen to the front room. Those relatives. Have you ever had relatives that hugged you a lot? And finally, after a big supper, two or three times around until we all got a turn at the table, there was quiet talk and we were in twos and threes through the house. There they are eating their supper. Kids are still at the table eating. I think they're feeding the dog too. The relatives weren't particular about beds, which was good since we there weren't any extras. So a few of them squeezed in with us and they slept and the rest slept on the floor. Some with their arms thrown over the closest person or some with an arm across one person and a leg across the other. It was different going to sleep with all that new breathing in the house. That's a lot of people sleeping in that house. The relatives stayed for weeks and weeks. They helped us tend the garden and they fixed any broken things they could find. They ate up all our strawberries and melons then promised we could eat up all their grapes and peaches when we visited Virginia. It looks like they're having a good time, doesn't it? I told you you'd like these pictures. But none of us thought about Virginia much. We were so busy hugging and eating and just breathing together.
Finally, after a long time, the relatives loaded up their ice chest and headed back to Virginia at four in the morning. We'd stood there in our pajamas and waved them off in the dark. We watched the relatives disappear down the road. Then we crawled back into our beds that felt too big and too quiet, and we fell asleep. Oops, I forgot to show you that picture. Hugging them and waving goodbye. And the relatives drove on all day long and into the night. And while they traveled along, they looked at the strange houses and different mountains, and they thought about their dark purple grapes waiting at home in Virginia. But they thought about us too, missing them, and they missed us. Driving home. And when they were finally home in Virginia, they crawled back into their silent, soft beds and dreamed about next summer. Doesn't that look like Bedford County? The Blue Ridge Mountains on the side. I think the story could have been written right around here. The end. I hope you enjoyed the story as much as I do.